This is CUNY TV, the City University of New York. Welcome to Eldridge and Company. Last year, after 40 years, Ramona Ripston retired as the executive director of the ACLU of Southern California. The LA Times described her as a disarming mixture of toughness and charm, fierce in battle and politically sophisticated, and an important part of recent Los Angeles history. She's my guest today. Thank you. Welcome to you. It's good to be here. Thank I you. love New York. <laughs> Well, the form years, of New York. <laughs> you used to live in New York, so yes. you moved there to become the director of the ACLU. That's right. And That's right. great. So Southern California is a fascinating place, isn't it? Well, it is, yes. It's got such contrast. It's a contrast. changing place now. Yeah, how is it changing? Well, you know, the Latino population is growing. Yeah. Um, it's, um, I think, more liberal than it had been. Um, and it, it, it's exciting. Um, yeah. But it, in Southern California, Santa Barbara, is that in Southern California? S yes, but it, no, it's north of Los Angeles. Yes, yeah, so, oh, you have everything south. Not everything. But the, 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 the southern part of California is really quite conservative. Right. But, you know, we have Beverly Hills, we right. have uh, the enclave, lots of basically. universities. Yeah. It's really, but then you have Orange County. We have Orange County, and which is changing to some extent. Is that right? Yes. And San Diego, what's that like? San Diego is more conservative, yes. It's got more, is it an older community? We, that's what we think it is, but I don't I know. I think it is an older because community. Because people retire. So the Civil Liberties Union traditionally sees itself, I mean, does, um, what, First Amendment cases? Freedom, well, um, freedom of due process cases, um, education cases, um, I mean, we did, we had a big docket. We did not only a lot of litigation, we also did legislation. Um, we had a terrible police chief in Los Angeles for a very, very long time. And we were instrumental in helping him decide to retire. <laughs> but so when you moved there, though, that was a major issue, was the, the behavior of the LA pol Police Department. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and also then you had, I mean, problems, I guess, with Racism? Yes. Well, racism, particularly on the part of the police department. Oh, is that right? And, yeah. um, you know, it was really impossible to try someone uh, for a crime because the racism in the police department was really, really rather overwhelming. And there were some fa very famous cases, I think. Right? I well, the O.J. Simpson yeah. case. Well, yes. was, he the t was he the police chief then? Oh, no, no, no. that no, was way no, before. No. Yeah. O.J. Simpson was the football player who No, I know. Him. No, but I meant was, was the bat, the guy oh, who got yes, to Oh, yes, yes. The police chief was yeah. really terrible. Yeah. And lots of the police officers were there for many, many long time. We have a wonderful police chief now who really, interestingly enough, has some, an assistant who's in charge of constitutional policing. Oh, that's so interesting. You know, when I moved there, it was so amazing. I grew up in um, Queens, and when my mother set me off to go to the store or to do an errand, she would say to me, Ramona, if you get lost, go to the nearest police officer, ask him how to get home. <laughs> in Los Angeles, particularly kids of color, their mother would say, don't go near police officers, you know, you find your way. I couldn't believe that one. The difference. I, the, yeah. the difference. Yeah. So now who's the police chief? Um, his name is, um, Sir. <laughs> oh, I know him so well, too. It's all right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we'll go on. But the cons that's such an interesting thing. Do they do, uh, are they accused of racial profiling? Um, we think that they're, they're not stopping people anymore the way they used yeah. to. We do think that too many people of color are stopped in automobiles. Um, but, um, and we did, um, Yale University did a uh, study for us and found that there were still too many um, 
people of color who were stopped. Um, but um, the police commission found that they had improved so much that uh, they're making very good progress and that, you know. Everybody's hopeful. <laughs> that it that's stop. right. And the prison situation in California has been notorious for its overcrowdedness and, and things. And the percentage of people in color in the prisons in California? Very, very. We have something called three, three strikes. Oh, that's right. That's um, and the three strikes, we also in California have this terrible initiative system. You know, when I was asked to apply for this job, I thought to myself, how wonderful, an initiative system where you can go to the polls and people can vote on things to change the law. Well, what I found out when I got there is that money really rules, and uh, we passed two terrible initiatives, a three strikes initiative, where um, a young person who can steal a, a bicycle it, and then goes on to commit other crimes yeah. Can be lifting. held for three strikes and go to prison for long periods of time. We also try young people, 16 as adults, and that came about um, by the initiative system. Initiative. And then you capped property taxes, which also then affected <laughs> the budget, yeah. right? That's true. Yeah. But the, the uh, prison system is therefore much more crowded because of this. Yes. And they've had then to release people. And, well, but you know, you can go look at people who were there for a third strike, and this third strike might be an incons inconsequential crime. Shoplifting in a supermarket. That's right. Um, and, um, or if you have committed a crime and you're picked up for drug, drunk driving, um, That's they can send you back to prison. So some of those things are beginning to change. The medical attention to inmates at the prison system was absolutely terrible. Um, but it's improving now. It's under court order, and the court is watching the system, the prison system. One of the things you're interested in, in addition to all these other constitutional rights and things, is uh, the question of poverty and how an organization would respond to that and what kind of legislation or actions that you foresee, I don't, I, you know? if. I mean, it just reminded me, I jumped to this when you said for a, a slight kind of crime, a shoplifting in a, in a supermarket, be your third strike, and that's because you're hungry, you've got some hungry kids at home because you don't have any money. So then that's the effect of poverty, right? Well, that, that certainly is. Um, I um, have believe. I mean, I certainly believe in everything the ACLU does, and particularly when I hear we have a presidential candidate who doesn't believe in the separation of church and state, which is one of the basics that we all believe in, that there's a separation between church and state. You can belong to any religion you want to, but the state shouldn't have any uh, action uh, to <laughs> so stop it. Um, I, it scares me, and, and maybe we still don't know enough about that yeah. political bill of rights. But I believe that um, economic rights are really dependent um, on political rights. I think you have to have both. And we have lots of very poor people in Los Angeles. And, you know, I, I have some statistics for the nation. I'd just like to read you because it really... And, and the other thing, Ronnie, I don't, under, I don't think a lot of people know that people who have a lot of money because of investments pay a lower rate of taxation than right. people who earn money. You know, Warren Buffett just said yeah. he, his secretary pays a higher rate of taxes yeah, than he does. Than he does. Yeah. But, but so that's the 1% was... that we got all these people talking about in there. That's right. Wall Street, yeah. But I, I just want to read you this. Okay. The 400 wealthiest Americans have a greater combined net worth than the bottom 50 million Americans. Um, and these are New York Times statistics, not mine. The top 1% of Americans present more wealth than the bottom 90%. And then in the George Bush expansion from 2002 to 2007, 65% of economic gains went to the richest 1%. Now, there's something wrong with this system. This needs to be, 
we need to really, you know, we've made some progress. We now provide lawyers for people accused of crimes um, if they can't afford them. Although I really think that, you know, a mother who's in jeopardy of losing a child really in a civil case should have a lawyer yeah. too, and we haven't gotten that yeah. far in the system. Um, I think that, and we in Southern California did a lawsuit to prove that the education in uh, Los Angeles in grade schools was terrible. Uh, and we sued and we won. Um, it was a long, we litigated it for five years and finally yeah. um, the legislature agreed that we needed to have uh, more money. Were they segregated, the school? school? I mean, they're some of the schools do better? Well, what they're, <laughs> they're not segregated in the way that they were when I first, yeah. you know, right. um, it was, it's sort of de facto, you know, if you live in a housing project, if you live in a poor area, you probably go to a bad school. Yeah. Um, but the um, uh, city council or the board of education hasn't done it, but it, it's just because of where people live. Yeah. And, um, you know, very poor people, um, what we found was that this, what was happening is that very poor schools, um, the teachers, you know, the last, the first in, first out, kids in lower grades were having six, seven, eight teachers in one year. And these are kids that needed some stability because mm. most of them don't have fathers. Right. They had mothers and they needed stability in school. So we brought a lawsuit, took us five years to win, but now there is, you know, much more stability um, in the lower grades. What did they have to do? Well, they got six, you know, they would get teachers, Teach for America students, uh, teachers, and then they would leave in a few months. No, but what did they do to improve? Oh, now they have uh, teachers who will stay a whole semester. Did they get more money? Yes, from absolutely. the state or from, from the, the state. I see. So was this for the whole state? Yes, it's great. Yeah, and the school system has improved. It has improved. And yes. Did the board of education is it appointed, elected, or what? The board of education is elected. Yeah, it's something. So is are they hot races? Do people pay attention? <laughs> you know, in some communities, if you go to a rich community, yeah. I mean, I had board members who made substantial contributions to the ACLU, who kids went to public school, um, got into Stanford University, because the parents were able to help subsidize right. the public schools. Right. They did, you know, yeah. all sorts of events that would attract people and give people more money. Does property tax go to the, to the school system? Well, we have Proposition 13 yeah, now. Right. And so that uh, if you own a home for many, many, many years, and it may be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, yeah, you are taxed at what the rate was back yeah, then. Right. But, I mean, does the property tax go into a general revenue, do you know, or does it go specifically to education? Well, it's shared. It goes yeah. into general well, revenue and also well, goes into, yeah. a general, uh, into schools. But part of the things that was affecting the schools was what happened with Proposition 13. Yeah, that's so incredible. Now, you know, the, we have this crazy um, Republican primaries. <laughs> and, and then we have, as you said, the discrepancy between the rich and the poor and the difficulty with poverty. And then we have the Occupy Wall Street movement. Is that, did that take hold in Los Angeles? Oh, yes, yes. Uh -huh. Occupy um, occupied our... Uh, 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 next to the uh, city hall, we have uh -huh. a big park, and um, uh, it was really quite active there. And I went down several times and and thought and talked to the organizer. I thought it was a wonderful thing I, yeah. because I think it drew attention to the fact that a lot of us are ninety nine percenters. Yeah. A lot of us don't have investments um, and are not making a lot of money. And people have been unemployed for long periods of time. It's and, you know, houses, I mean, we now come to know that a lot of houses that were foreclosed, there was just an error, and they should not have been foreclosed. And the banks have not been held responsible for what happened. So I liked, um, I, I met with some of the 99 percenters, and 
I thought they were pretty smart and, and really had a good thing going for a while. So you look at things, though, from a, a legal point of view, litigation or something like that. How did, what would you do for, for the 99%? <laughs> How do you improve this? How do you eliminate all of this? Well, I really think thing. that the, the banks have to be held accountable for what they did. Yeah. Um, I think that banks should be more in tune with the people who they gave mortgages to. The, man the banks gave mortgages to people who should, should never have had mortgages. Uh, it was so easy to get a mortgage yeah, just early. Yeah, get it. That's right, yeah. in, in the 80s and 90s. Um, so I think the banks have to be held accountable. Um, yeah, for what they did. Uh, at the same time, we have to, um, I think, re give more power to the people. So, I mean, all this, these campaigns for, um, for diminishing the power of unions, for the states that don't want collective bargaining, for all of these things, it's such a concerted effort. But it all comes together in this primary. It's so interesting to me. And the Republicans, I think, are taking totally the losing stand, and I maybe I'm wrong. You think the people in this country really support what they're saying? Well, I think that um, the union movement uh, is not as strong as it once was. I think that that is really terrible, um, and we really, the, um, you know, I've forgotten which state, but some of these... Wisconsin. States, Wisconsin, that's it, where the governor has yeah. just been recalled, we well, hope. They won, yeah. 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 Um, is terrible yeah. because unions needed to protect working class people. Right. Um, and, and then they, in Indiana now, they have the right to, what is they call it, the right to work? Because whatever that is where you don't have to, you don't have to give your dues to the union. So all along, we're diminishing the earning power of the middle class. We're not paying any attention to the really poor, it seems to me, in this whole campaign, right? I mean, you ne the really poor we don't hear about, except that uh, uh, Gingrich wants them to, the kids to be janitors in schools or something like that, you know, instead of, so they learn how to work. Um, but I think everybody's really talking about the 99%, and the criticism of Romney is that he doesn't understand it, because he's the 1% he can't seem to get over it, right? All right. He, you know, he yeah. drives a pickup truck, but his right. wife drives two Cadillacs. Right. Um, and he know he doesn't know race car drivers or race car, but he knows the owners. I mean, it's it, he just doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. And that accentuates, in a way, the difference. Oh, there's no question about that. Yeah. And, you know, you go to Los Angeles, you go to Beverly Hills, you see these huge mansions where people right. live. And then you go to Watts, yeah. where people live in in clapboard houses. I mean, it, there is a tremendous difference. And, but I think we have to do more for poor people in this yeah. country. I think unions are very, very important, but lots of people don't work. Yeah. Um, and so they only join unions when they are working. Um, so the what do we do? schools in poor districts are terrible. Um, well, I mean, I think that we really need to, to focus on such things as education, um, so that all young people get a really good education, so that they're pre prepared to go out into... Well, it's uh, always been, how long have we been arguing about child, early childhood education? Uh, and for child, years. How many, how many years? We know. We've had, what was that famous uh, Ypsilanti study in Michigan that the children who went to Head Start did so much better than the kids who don't. And we know all of this, and yet we worry about putting people in prison. I mean, most of these people in prison, not only are they not educated, but I think the figures show that most of them have learning disabilities of some kind that either haven't been discovered or haven't been remediated at all. So it's so hard. And then when they come out of prison, and then, but do they don't have the recidivism problem that we have in New York because if it's three strikes, you're in there forever. Yeah, I mean, th we have terrible laws uh, because of the initiative system. Yeah. You know, the three strikes, um, just people can't get out. Yeah. We also sentence young people, people under 21, to adult courts um, and, adult and for prisons. very long sentences. In, in adult prisons. Uh, in adult prisons. And you know what prisons are yeah. like. Horrible. Right. So now, I understand you're not an attorney. No, I am not. 
<laughs> is that unusual to be head of a of an affiliate that not be? Years ago, um, we, as a rule, were not lawyers, but more and more. Um, the executive directors are attorneys. The um, young man who replaced me, who uh, I had hired and, and headed our Orange County office, is a lawyer. But it's important also, and I think you exemplify it, to be have a political sense because it's not the aim of it is what? Is it the aim to, to change what's wrong, right? And to do that is a, is a whole campaign. I think it's important to be a good organizer, yeah. to know how to organize the community. Uh, and of course, you have to be able to raise money. It really is important. Um, and you also have to be able to talk to legislators and oh to yes, lobby. Yes, and to, yes. To work we do a lot of lobbying, yeah. more and more lobbying, you know, both in Congress and uh, in the state legislature and in the city council. Um, it's, yeah, so uh, so you, you're, you map out a campaign? That's right. You go to court. <laughs> you talk to other you organized groups and people, parents and residents and whoever within a community. They then go after what? Their local officials at all levels. <laughs> so it's important to be able to do both, yes, to right. have lawyers who can sue, right. but then have people who can organize, who can go to see legislators and convince le legislators that we need change in right. California. We have some terrible laws in California. Um, <laughs> and it's through the initiative system. And we are unable to change or really substantially reform that. Have you, uh, run, a, have you run your own initiative? Um, we have, but they were fairly innocuous. I mean, we... Um, but we're going to have, we, we now um, have been successful in getting onto the ballot in the um, presidential election uh, an initiative that would end the death penalty in California. It would substitute life in prison without the possibility of, of parole. And um, we collected the signatures and polling shows that we could win this, we could win this. We don't necessarily execute more people but we send more people to the death chambers Man. because of appeals and the courts. They always don't get uh, executed. But we send more people to the death chamber than they do in Texas, except we don't carry it out quite as frequently. Well, that's good. I always remember California had the gas chamber. Yes. I remember that. It always seemed so barbaric. Well, the whole thing seems so barbaric. Well, now it's a, you know, injection. Lethal injection. But you think that, so who do you work with to get to have that? Are there, there are groups that have been always against the death penalty yes. that help you? There's wonderful Death Penalty Focus, which is a wonderful organization. Um, we go to our constituency, the people who uh, contribute, our members. Um, and we took to the streets and we asked people, uh, in order to get it on the ballot, we had to get a, a, a huge number of signatures, but we were able to get that. And I really feel very enthusiastic because I took some of the petitions and I stopped people and talked to them. And I think we have a growing population. I mean, what are the few countries that still execute people? It's so barbaric. It is it? barbaric. Yeah, we are, aren't we? The the and what do they what do they call the Europe? I don't know. Yes, yeah. most countries right. have ended. Right. Uh, death Any penalty. And it is possible to send people to prison without the possibility of parole. Now, whether you think that's a good idea or not, but that is the next step anyway. Um, yeah, so they'll join the three strikes and you're out. That'll be pretty bad. That's true. Anyway, this other jo this job also entails, and the thing that we always come down to is money. Yes. So the executive director has that position of raising the money? Well, we have, um, you know, a development director and a development staff, and we have uh, events, and we have dinners. Um, but in the final analysis, the executive director has to see that the budget is raised, yes. We have just, uh, we haven't even mentioned it, and the program goes so fast. We haven't mentioned the struggle to protect women's rights uh, for their bodies. Has that been an issue? I mean, has there been an attempt with abortion in California? Um, we, yes, we really had to fight uh, for choice. Uh, we have one choice, but then we had 
a number of years where we had these people who would stop people going into Planned Clinic Parenthood. Access, going yeah. in. Yes, I mean, it was really quite terrible. Um, but now, um, I, I think choice is secure in California. Although, who knows with this yeah, but is, um, Well, I think, a, don't you think this has election. backfired and this has made people more concerned? I, th I have a feeling that women, a majority of the women are, are not happy with the discussions. I mean, well, I think that's true, but you know, when Congress considers not giving money to Planned Parenthood because they do abortions, but they do a lot more than abortions, yeah. I mean, it's a, a, a terrible, terrible move. Why um, people who are anti-choice, you know, are so active and and um, yeah. vociferous? It just doesn't make it any. It doesn't sense. make any sense at all because nobody's making them have an abortion. That's right. <laughs> but they're trying to stop us from having it. If and and to. poor people who don't have, you know, the kind of information yeah. that you and I have always yeah. had. It's, it's really wrong. So you see all the bad things and you try to correct them. But at the same time, I think we know the good things we have and we try to be joyful about them, our luck and good fortune. Well, I think things are changing. I think it's been tough. I think it's tough to be poor. It's not tough for us. We're managing. But I think that we're beginning to understand that we need to um, improve our schools. People need education that we need to bring people into the, a civil liberties fold where they can make better choices. Well, we really have people that have some degree of, that, that are, that's a just society, right? That's true, and I yeah. thank you for what you try to do. Well, and I thank you for all of the work you've done, and I hope you're gonna continue. I certainly am. Okay. If there are any people you'd like to hear and topics you'd like us to explore, please let me know. You can write to me at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. Or you can go to the website at cuny.tv and click on Contact Us. I look forward to hearing from you.